My name is Purge and I approve the content in this video. Hey guys, this is Suns Fan and welcome to the official Dota Cinema Guide to Nature's Prophet. If you aren't familiar with this hero, you may want to watch the introduction we did for him at the corresponding link. Nature's Prophet is an intelligence hero who can be built as both a carry and support. He can also gank and push with the best of them thanks to his global presence. Whether you're jungling or playing solo, Nature's Prophet is pretty flexible overall. But no matter what you choose to do, just know you'll primarily be leveling Nature's Call and Teleport. Start out with Nature's Call and level it until 5. This is both useful for jungling as well as the suicide solo. Get Teleport at 2 and Sprout at 4. No matter the build you're going, never get more than 1 into Sprout because 1. It doesn't scale particularly well, especially if heroes are carrying tangos early in the game. And two, for early game ganks, a level 1 sprout is more than enough if it's not countered already. Be sure to get your ultimate Wrath of Nature at the standard 6, 11, and 16. Then instead of finishing Nature's Call, go ahead and max teleport first. Then you can get that last level of Nature's Call. Having a higher level of teleportation earlier will allow you to gank more often. But if you're having real trouble taking down neutrals, you can still max Nature's Call first. Regardless, after you've maxed these skills, you can either level up Sprout if you think it'll be effective, or you can just opt for stats. The thing to realize is that you can mix and match Teleport and Nature's Call quite a bit. As long as you have at least one level in all three spells by level 5, you can do work. If you're jungling, get several clarities so you can pop Nature's Call whenever you need. If you're soloing mid or the side solo, then you can still use a couple clarities, but in combination with some health regeneration. With any extra money, buy a Ring of Protection to turn into a Ring of Basilius. Boots of choice are almost always treads, since the extra HP and attack speed come in handy during your ganks. For early game, getting an urn is an amazing idea. Whether you're in the jungle or a soloing lane, ganking should be your highest priority. Even if you don't technically help in the gank, your teleport alone should allow you to rack up easy charges, as long as you're paying attention. A Medallion of Courage is also a cost-effective item that could be looked at, especially in the jungle, since it'll allow you to farm much easier. And although it's often misunderstood by pub players, a Hand of Midas still technically makes sense on Profit, since he really does need a good amount of gold and experience to be effective. Into the mid-game, a mech is pretty common to find, since it gives you great tank ability, as well as amazing support for your team, and extra pushing power for your treants. Past this, a Necronomicon or Aghanim Scepter would also be excellent since they will let you push down towers and lanes with ease. In addition to this, a Maelstrom is a cheap item for pushing and will aid you later if you go for a hard hitting build. For late game, a Scythe of Ice is pretty much the best tool since it provides you with a disable and great stats. As an alternative to this, or in addition to if you're farming well, an Orchid could be great, especially against heroes with escape mechanisms. If you ever become a right-clicking threat to the enemy team, then purchasing a BKB will be a must. Now if you're going for the pub DPS build, you could substitute some items for the following variety. This variety includes a Desolator, Daedalus, Mjolnir, and Manta. Here are some quick notes regarding the laning phase before we go over his skills in depth. Remember that if you're in the suicide lane, you can use your tree ants to pull the creep wave to your tower so you can net some easy experience. Also use them to deny runes if you or your teammate is not able to get to them. If you're having real trouble getting much experience and farm, you can always teleport yourself to the radiant jungle between the tier 2 towers mid and bottom. You can farm a bit there without any trouble since the creeps can attack you and you won't have to expend any mana. In addition to all this, in the suicide lane, getting max tree ants first is somewhat common since you won't be able to do much in your lane. You can just TP to a lane to gank, and then push with the Fury. Remember that although you'll typically only have one level in Sprout until later in the game, it can be an amazing tool for ganking. It has many abilities for both offensive and defensive use. It's commonly used on yourself in order to take vision away from pursuing enemies, therefore letting you TP away in peace. It can also be used to give some vision or just block a small choke point. Teleport and Nature's Call we don't need to spend too much time on since they're relatively self-explanatory. Teleport is quite possibly the best skill in the game since you can teleport globally. The caveat to this is the enemy will see the position in which you're TPing, but you can use this to scare them as well since you can just cancel it at any time without using any mana. Nature's Call on the other hand is great for pushing and jungling. Some people are scared of micro in general, but in the jungle, microing these units couldn't be easier. 
Just move one away from the neutrals as it gets low, then rinse and repeat. But in general use, microing these units isn't as game breaking as microing, let's say, something like Meepo's clones. But good usage for trapping purposes could be amazing, but again, it's not required. Then we get to Wrath of Nature, which many people would assume needs no explanation. But we'll talk about it because a good portion of players use this incorrectly. Players tend to spam it as it comes off cooldown because of their greed for gold. But you should really put more thought into this. If you use this on cooldown every time, you'll 1. Push the lanes unneedingly, 2. Take farm away from carries who need it, and 3. You may not have it available if a low hero is fleeing from the scene. But please note that good profit players will be involved in almost every kill since there's little excuse for you not to be. It can be tempting to farm all game, but organizing or just taking part in ganks will help more in the long run, the long run being winning games. Prophet is strong in general because of his overall versatility and ability to be involved in the game throughout all phases, which if you think about isn't the most common trait to possess. In teamfights, your ult is deceptively powerful. For maximum effectiveness, target it at creeps somewhere else on the map. As long as you still have vision on your enemies, they'll be dealt a much larger amount of damage by the time the bounces hit them. Aside from that, keep good positioning and use your sprouts wisely. There's nothing worse than a friendly fire sprout in which you've trapped a hard-hitting ally. Lastly, the skill you'll have to master if you want to be an effective nature's prophet is map awareness. Whether it's teleporting to get the last hit on a fleeing enemy hero, joining your team for a gank, or pushing down vulnerable towers, if you arrive at the right time with a timely urn charge or mech, you can shift the balance in your favor. Since nature's prophet works so well with just about every hero, We'll be cute and add other global presences to the list. Heroes such as Spectre, Zeus, Tinker, and Wisp are a few key ones to mention. Now the list of heroes that Prophet should stay away from is a different story. They include trained assassins and gankers who can come out of nowhere and punish you. These heroes include Ricky, Bounty Hunter, Nyx Assassin, Night Stalker, and Wisp, who seems to be in a love-hate relationship with our tree summoning friend. Thanks for watching and please remember to subscribe to our YouTube. Also a big thanks to Flawless and Purge for their help in writing this guide. You can check out their awesome